good day everyone good sunday to anyone who is watching this today what we have to go over is the other part of the data mine stuff for 9.2 because yesterday we went over the more important chunk of news which were the tier sets why well because they are tied to character power they are also tied to your gameplay to the power of your spec and your class so they are much more interesting to go over but today we also have the other part of things that have been data mined from the perhaps very soon incoming ptr of 9.2 first of all is the tier sets not the actual bonuses this time but the cosmetic look of the tier set why because once the video released by blizzard announcing 9.2 eternities end they also showed the tier sets how they looked there was actually a significant amount of time shown in that video where they only displayed the art so the concept art the design choice but then some people pointed out when blizzard was showing the tier sets in game that scientifically speaking technically speaking they looked like shit some of the more hopeful folks decided to think that this was just a preview that the sets were not completed yet and this was just a initial mock-up of how they would have looked so luckily we can now announce that indeed the tier sets that are going to be coming in 9.2 are not are definitely not going to look as wonky as what we saw in that announcement video so we have all of the classes and specs tier sets right now being available to look up they are actually pretty good we are finally going back to this style of tier sets that blizzard used before where they are trying to match the aesthetics and the colors as well as the materials that are used from the new zone the new raid and the new aesthetics used in there in this case in zerith mortis and the new raid while still trying to show some of the you know typical class fantasy styles like you have the druids with horns and what looks like pseudo leatherish type of covers you also have hunters with this pretty cool looking helmet you have monks which for some reason have as a class fantasy these orbs these spheres around their necks which somehow always happen to have in their tier sets you have paladin the usual somehow looking like the tier two from vanilla etc etc so they are definitely better looking than what we have gotten in the original video there is one of these sets however which has sparked some discussion which is the warlock set you know following the aesthetics and art style of the patch it's white and red so it's not really warlocky it's you know kind of different compared to what we usually get from warlocks but that's not what caught people's attention apparently this set particularly when looked from behind is too similar to the hoods war by the kkk the Klux clan pretty much that's the tldr so people made that connection pretty quickly and also pretty quickly blizzard announced that yeah it might have been an oversight and we're going to go into work to adjust the set and you will see changes in the forthcoming build so likely most of the set is going to remain the same they are just going to adjust pretty much the helmet the top of the helmet at the very least anyways still good to see that the tier sets are not going to be as bland and boring as some people put it leveling greens as they looked like in the initial announcement there is also another addition this time is not a tier set this time is a model for a pet because there has been talk about the male counterpart of the succubus for years at this point and finally 9.2 is going to be the patch that is going to bring the incubus to the game so now you're going to have a male model of the succubus that you will be able to use as a warlock now i am a bit disappointed that this one looks even more scantily clad than the female version i would have wanted to see some more parity between the two especially when it comes to updating the older model of the female succubus but still on its own it's a pretty good model there is also talking about new models we do have and this is a spoiler of course in case some people still thought this wasn't going to happen there is the new model for sylvanas because now in 9.2 it has been data mined which you could also see by the way if you try to look carefully in the video you could see the model in the announcement it's the normal back to normal sylvanas model 
This is what people have theorized before, the redemption arc of Sylvanas, who will somehow end up possibly redeeming herself or sacrificing herself, taking the place of some character, perhaps the Jailer himself, to redeem all her evil deeds she has done up to this point. Now, since we are talking about new models and new additions, there is something else, because I have seen recently some players get triggered about one of the new shop purchases you can have, the microtransaction options to buy this new set as a whole. And people then found even more grounds to shit on Blizzard since this set looks nice, whereas compared to the initially shown tier sets that looked horrible, you know, it made, it made an even bigger contrast. Blizzard is putting more effort and emphasis on the MTX shop than they are in their own tier sets in-game, etc, etc. This set also goes nicely together with one of the other in-game store mounts, which is the Sapphire Skyblazer, one of the many, you know, six-month subscription type of shit that is getting thrown your way. Now, in 9.2, there is going to be the same skeleton, the same model being ported into a different color palette for everyone to get. This is going to be embedded into the new Cypher of the First Ones system, so very likely you will be able to obtain this, not for free, but anyone doing the same things as anyone else in Zerith Mortis, you will be able to obtain this mount. In my personal opinion, it even has a better and cooler color palette than the original one you have to get from the shop, so that's pretty cool. We do also have, as far as models are concerned, we have seen the models of the tier sets, we have seen the ones for Sylvanas, we have seen the one for the new mount, but then we also start getting the models of the weapons, the ones that are going to be available in the new raid. Blizzard is going for this progenitor style for the art style of both weapons and armors, so at the very least the thing that gives me a little bit more of a positive feeling towards these weapons, this style of weapons, is the fact that at the very least they have some color, right? They are a little bit colorful. We have just gotten through the Maw and then Cortia with Sanctum of Domination and everything was black. It was black, dark gray, and the only color palette available was red in the armors and in the weapons. Instead, now the colors are much more bright, they are much more vibrant and varied compared to before, so at the very least there is some color difference we are we are veering a little bit towards the the glowy orange slash yellow compared to what we have gotten before up to this point in this expansion which i think if not better at the very least it's good because it's varied it's different it gives you something that you haven't gotten in a while now as far as the art style and the color choices of armors and sets and weapons that we have gotten in shadowlands so those are the models for the weapons lastly we do have an additional change being developed by Blizzard, which has to do with the double legendaries. So we will go over in time investigating all of the possible cool interactions with different specs using different legendaries at the same time. But first, of course, there is the first question that people might have had. What happens then when we can play multiple covenants? right because we have to play now with one legendary and it already happens often that changing spec and changing covenants of course is going to cause you to use a different legendary in 9.2 this entire deal is going to further expand because you get to use two legendaries not to mention because you can respec between different covenants now it's going to increase the number of legendaries you can have even more and now the combination of legendaries is going to require one of the covenant legendaries to be usable you know this can start to expand and take up a lot of slots in your armor sets when it comes to legendary slots. Maybe you are a Kyrian single target DPS and you need a helmet and boots that are legendaries and then you reroll to Ventir and this time you are a healer and you want the bracers and the pants as legendaries and finally you go over to Nightfay as a tank and this time you want the chest and the ring as legendaries. You know, it starts to be a lot to keep track of, to, to save slots and change around every time. So Blizzard has found a makeshift solution with this. The solution is that 
as you will meet the enlightened brokers in Zareth Mortis and you will become allied with them, you will be able to have a new feature, being able to have a legendary belt empowered with your Covenant's rune carving effect. The unique characteristic of this new legendary is that your rune carving effect will switch freely alongside your character whenever swapping Covenants. There is no need to craft a new legendary belt for each Covenant. The legendary belt will also automatically match the look of your class's progenitor armor set and can be equipped alongside, of course, another Shadowlands legendary in a different armor slot. Not only this, but Blizzard goes beyond. What if, just like we had to go from 9.0 to 9.1, what if we have already our best in slot legendary in the belt? Would this mean we have to recraft it in a different slot? Not necessarily, because if you would like to craft the new covenant swapping rune carving effect on a different armor slot, there is now going to be a rune carving memory which will let you do so. So you will now be able to use a rune carving memory on any piece of item you want to make it function as the covenant swapping legendary. So this is a very good effect, not just because it is telling you that you no longer have to worry about crafting multiple covenant legendaries, which is very good. Now one will do. What is also good is that you now have even more freedom to basically fill the gaps in your gear with this type of crafting. For example, let's just say you are now using the default belt the one that can swap covenants. But then you loot a best in slot mythic quality item level belt. You kind of want to use it, but you can't because that's supposed to be the slot of your covenant swapping legendary belt. With this new system, with this new rune carving memory, you can just take the bracers blank white item to craft legendary on and turn your bracers into the piece of gear that allows you to keep the covenant legendary whenever you swap. And now you can keep your super high item level belt that you looted. So it does allow you even more variety in the ability to equip your gear without being hindered too much by all this mix and match of legendary items that you need to make fit in your setup. Now that you can change covenants, you can change specs, and there can be different combinations. This is going to make it much easier to get to the point you want to be with your legendaries. Now, now that we have gone through all of this stuff related to models, as well as the tiny little bit about your ease of use, your quality of life for Covenant Legendary Crafting, we can spend the last minute of this video talking about Xerath Mortis itself, because while we still don't know exactly what we have to do in there, although we know it's daily quests and we know it's world quests, but more details we don't have yet, suddenly I am Yoda, what we have here is the map. So the first thing to notice from the map is that it is larger than Cortia and it is larger than the Mo. Of course, we also know that in Zareth Mortis you will be able to fly. So we do have also additional isles around Zareth Mortis that you will be able to reach. Perhaps before flying, you will be able to reach with teleporters and similar. Either way, it does look larger. Of course, it's a question of how many of these areas are actually worth going into. Is there actually going to be anything? Is that little lake to the left just random useless water that does nothing? Or is there going to be something in there? Etc, etc. But at the very least, at first glance, it does look like the end game zone for 9.2 is going to be quite larger than the previous end game zones we have gotten, Cortia and the Mo. What we can also see a little bit slightly is that it doesn't look as vertical as we have gotten for example in the Mo and in some cases in Cortia as well. There were quite a lot of ups and downs and caves and little loops you had to go through to go up and down the terrain in those zones. This one seems much more flat. There is what it looks like a sloop downwards in the northern part of the zone, in the desert part of the zone, but for the most part it does look a little bit more flat and easy to traverse compared to the other two zones which is going to be also better for you and your experience in there as well. For now, however, this is all we have for the day. We will eventually go through and follow any other changes as we get closer to the PTR and then eventually as the PTR gets released. For now, this is where we take our break for the end of this weekend on Sunday. Thank you guys, as usual, for watching the video. If you want to continue supporting the channel, you can leave a like down below, as well as leaving down a comment would be appreciated. And as always, you can also subscribe to the channel. This time around, though, it is only to the people whose name is shorter than six 
letters. See you guys soon, and in the meantime, just if you want to feel closer to me, right this second it is 10.49pm. There you go.